getting started with intermittent fasting. So, you now know that intermittent fasting has a number of benefits for you, apart from steady weight loss. What you need to do now is make a start with intermittent fasting. Because there are several methods available, a lot of people tend to make starting more complicated than it really is. There is no need to overthink this at all. In fact, you don't need to think about it hardly at all. You are already fasting every single day with your sleeping cycle each day. Whether you sleep for 8 hours a day, or a little more or less, you do not consume any calories while you are asleep, right? Build on what you already have. What does this mean? It means that you can do it and have had years of practice. It also means that you have a block of hours every day where you are already fasting and you just need to build on this. During your waking hours, do you think about food and eating every second? Of course you don't. There are times that you are hungry and you eat when this happens, but that's it. This means that there are another batch of hours when you are awake when you are not thinking about eating. So, when you put all of this into context, you have the makings of a fasting window and an eating window. All you have to do is make some adjustments so that you only eat during the eating window. No major re-engineering. This is all good news for you. There are significant amounts of time that you are not eating each day. All you have to do is organize your fasting and eating patterns a bit. You are not looking at any re-engineering here. This is not something completely new that you will be doing. Many lifestyle changes are difficult because you have to introduce totally new concepts into your life and make them stick. With intermittent fasting, all you need to do is reorganize what you are already doing every day and have done since you were a child. Is it really that easy? Well, you will have to replace an old habit with a new one by determining a fasting window and an eating window. Breaking habits is not easy, but you can certainly win the day with a bit of persistence. Keep all of those benefits of intermittent fasting uppermost in your mind. Look, there's no miracle solution to breaking an old habit and installing a new one. There will be times in the beginning where things get a bit tough for you. During your fasting window, you are probably going to be tempted to eat, but many people have overcome this, and you can too. Consult your doctor. We recommend that you consult with your doctor before you start intermittent fasting. If you are on some special medication, not over the counter, there may be a risk for you. The same goes if you are pregnant. Just ask your doctor's advice first. You may have a heart condition or suffer from anxiety or depression. This may not mean that you cannot participate in intermittent fasting, but you need to check first. Your doctor may tell you to go for a specific intermittent fasting method that will be safe for you. We can't force you to speak with your doctor, but we highly recommend that you do. Choose your eating window. The most important aspect of intermittent fasting is your eating window. You need to be comfortable with this and forget about what others are saying. We are all different, and what works for others may not work for you. For example, some people are active through the night and considered night owls. They get up late in the day and stay awake until morning when they finally sleep. Others like to get up very early in the morning because they do their best work at this time. They will sleep early in the evening. The majority of people fall between these two extremes. You know your own pattern and what would work best for you. Never let intermittent fasting impose a different pattern. It has to fit in with what you are currently doing. Think about when you are the most active. This is the time that you will want to eat the most. Identify an 8-hour window if you are a man or a 10-hour window if you are a woman that covers your active time. It is critical that you base your eating window on your current lifestyle. Trying to change your lifestyle to fit someone else's idea of a good intermittent fasting schedule is never going to work. There will be so much resistance that you will resort to your old eating patterns very quickly, and we don't want you to do that. Decide when you are going to start. Maybe you are thinking that it is unnecessary to include this in the training. How many times have you thought about starting something and never quite got around to it? We all do this. So having a fixed start date for your intermittent fasting is very important. There's an old saying that tomorrow never comes, and this is so true. If you keep saying that you're going to start on your intermittent fasting journey tomorrow, and then you don't, then you will probably never start at all. So make a commitment and write it down if it helps. You can say that from a specific date, you will eat between your chosen eating window and fast for the remaining hours of the day. And then, of course, you must start on this day and follow the schedule. When you're setting your start date, you need to take into account a visit to your doctor to ensure that it is okay for you to participate in intermittent fasting and the determination of your eating window. Plan what you will eat. The most important thing to achieve with your eating window is satiety. This means that you will feel full before your fasting window begins. There are both physical and mental elements to satiety. On the physical side, your body will break down the food that you consume and then look for more. On the mental side, you need to consider your current eating habits. Are you a comfort eater? Or do you only eat when you are hungry? 
We are all different, so you need to take these things into consideration. Certain foods may make you feel fuller than others. You need to identify what these foods are and include them in your eating window. Foods that have a high fat and protein level will tend to fill you up more than others. You may not get this right the first time around. It may take a few days or even weeks to find the right combination of foods that will make you feel full in your eating window. That's okay. Just stick at it. Check for cravings here. Remember that satiety is physical and mental. Your aim is to reduce the cravings as much as you can during your fasting window. If you experience a craving, then drink a whole glass of water and see if that satisfies you. Otherwise, you will need to make some changes to your diet. Think about the best eating window for you. Is it going to be best for you to eat as soon as you wake up? Or perhaps it will be better for you to fast for a while after getting up and then introducing your eating window around lunchtime. Having a large meal before you start your fasting window usually works well. If you are on a plan where you will fast for 24 hours, then decide whether the weekend days will work well for you or not. It may be better to choose weekdays as you will probably have a lot of things going on to distract you from the thought of eating. Don't be afraid to move your eating window around if you have to. You may experience a slight dip in results when you do this, but it is better to make this change if your current plan is not working. Think long-term here. Plan for exercise. You knew this was coming, didn't you? There's no need to panic if you don't usually participate in regular exercise. You can just add some gentle exercise such as walking into your routine. The key to success here is to make small changes and build on these. So initially, you could just do some gentle stretches or go for a short walk, for example. We are not suggesting that you have to go to the gym for hours. Walk instead of taking the car to the local shops. Start using the stairs instead of the elevator. Park your car further away from a store entrance than you normally would, so you have to walk a little. Just do what you can to introduce regular exercise into your life and build on this. The benefits will be amazing for you. Get a good sleep. If you are not getting good, uninterrupted sleep right now, then you need to take steps to fix this. Don't drink caffeine-laden beverages before you sleep and avoid foods with sugar as well. Use different methods to relax your mind, such as mindfulness meditation and listening to soothing recordings. You have to ease into a good sleep pattern if you are not currently experiencing this. Prepare yourself mentally for a good sleep each night. When you do sleep well, it is less likely that you will wake up feeling hungry. If you are hungry, drink water. If you are feeling hungry, then you do not need to run to the fridge and find something to eat. Take the time out to monitor your hunger pangs. When did they start? Did they last for a long time? Was it really that unbearable? The thing is that hunger pangs tend to come and go. They are never usually as bad as you think they are going to be. One of the best ways to get rid of hunger pangs is to drink water. When you are drinking your water, your mind will not be fixated on the hunger pangs. If you have to, you can drink a zero-calorie soda, but water is better for you. Drinking water is a very effective way to deal with hunger pangs. In the next video, we will discuss the mistakes that you need to avoid with intermittent fasting. Yeah.